music nerds out there. Hey, um, my name's Luke Solomon. I'm a Nashville based, uh, touring and session musician and, um, I've been a gigging musician for 25 years or something. Um, in the same vein as a lot of guys who are sort of just rolling out of bed and, um, turning the camera on and playing a little bit of music uh, here on YouTube, I thought I'd come on and, and try my hand at uh, sharing some information and uh, uh, see if it's helpful to anybody out there. And maybe sometimes I'll play for you and I don't know, I'll, maybe I'll add a little um, <laughs> uh, imagery or something. I have another YouTube channel called Gear in a Movie and um, I review uh, gear, yeah, but I, but I put some footage behind it and stuff, um, just, uh, sort of for fun, but also, um, you know, come up with some different ideas and, and different angles of how to show, show off the gear. But anyway, um, that's, that's kind of what I want to do, um, right off the bat here in this video is just share some information from maybe a different angle. Um, that might be helpful to you, something that helped me early on um, when I was a gigging musician uh, or when I started gigging as a musician, I, I'd stay up late after my gigs and, and uh, study theory. Thankfully, I was able to gig alongside a lot of the local professors at, uh, in the town where I grew up, Kansas City. Um, there was a great, is a great university and conservatory there. And I was uh, playing gigs with the, uh, several of the adjunct faculty. And so uh, I learned how to sight read on the gig and just was really fortunate to be around some really great musicians with great ears and also some knowledge. And, um, you know, for me, the music, music theory side of things was to inform uh, what I was hearing, you know, because I could hear... <laughs> um, from players that were better than me, uh, what was, you know, the real stuff. And so, um, one of the things I thought I might offer, um, to you guys in this, this first little video and we'll see how it goes, you know, how, I don't know how often I'll be able to do this sort of thing, but, um, wanted to talk about on the guitar specifically, um, how to, uh, get familiarize yourself with looking at the root of a chord uh, on any given string. Okay. Um, a lot of times in American music, popular music, Western music, what have you, um, uh, guitar being sort of, uh, you know, uh, tagged as a rhythm instrument for a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, we tend to know more about the roots of chords on these, on these bass strings. Okay. So your E, your A, your D, um, that, that's a lot of times how people uh, look at the root of chords on the guitar. Whereas maybe on piano, you're, you're learning inversions more thoroughly and you can um, visualize the root pretty easily as it's right in front of you. Um, so one thing um, that I stumbled upon when I was uh, younger was uh, one of my guitar heroes, Pat Martino, great jazz guitarist who's passed away not too long ago. Um, really was influential to many, many players. He had um, posted some information on his website quite a while ago. I mean, this is, this is at least 20 years ago um, uh, regarding something he called sacred geometry, which, um, that part, I, I don't, you know, wasn't necessarily that helpful to me. But um, one of the things that was really helpful was um, he talked about constructing chords from a parent chord, so a dad or a mom. Um, and this is sort of related to um, the Barry Harris method of teaching that's out there all over uh, YouTube now, which is. Um, really an amazingly thorough way of looking at music in, in the Barry, I won't go into Barry's thing, except to say, you know, just by adding one note to the major scale, um, 
Barry is able to teach people, and actually now he has um, passed away as well, unfortunately, but um, his legacy carries on. Anyway, just by adding one note to um, the major scale, it opens up this whole world of voice leading from chord to chord. Um, that's a very natural, beautiful way of making music and also helps you to uh, reverse engineer or, you know, sort of analyze things um, that you're hearing. Uh, if you don't know what voice leading is, um, I, I'm, I'm not going to give you an encyclopedia definition, but for me, it's, um, you know, multiple voices or intervals in a chord moving up to another chord in a way that's logical, but also uh, highly musical. It's pleasing to the ear. Okay. Uh, usually in my mind, that's not just one voice or one note moving, uh, but it's multiple notes within a chord shifting up to another chord of some kind in a really pleasing and musical way. And it's the sound that we love to hear, you know, and uh, an accompanist. Okay, so let's talk about uh, getting back to the Pat Martino stuff. All right. Um, he starts by divvying up the 12 notes of our chromatic scale in Western music that we use. Okay, uh, so you, you may, you would need to be familiar with that. Um, one kind of cool way to play that on guitar is I'll start on A. So four notes, shift back a fret on the next string, back a fret on the next string, back a fret, same fret. Okay, so I'm back to A now. Okay, so that would be A to A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, but I, I doubled it to uh, twenty-four. All right, so that would be two octaves of uh, going from A to A. All right, all right. So um, divvying those up um, into symmetrical scales uh, would yield diminished and augmented or whole tone scales. All right. Um, for the purpose of, of this little time together um, and what uh, Mr. Martino was getting at, let's talk about the augmented chord first. Okay. So as a triad right here, I would have a G augmented. All right. So three, four, four. And that's on first string, second string, third string. All right. So we have <clears throat> G and B. And then we've augmented the D up by half a step to D sharp. All right. Now, here's where we get to the stuff. Uh, Martino talks about raising one interval at a time in that chord to yield a minor triad. All right, so we go from G augmented to A flat minor, just by moving one note. All right, the next string up, second string, that yields a E minor. The third string yields a C minor, okay? Now, we're gonna be able to do uh, so with that triad, we're going to have a yield of three minor triads per fret, okay? Meaning if I go up to A flat augmented or G sharp augmented, <laughs> um, that's going to yield three more minor triads, same shape as, as the last time, right? Okay, we can do that one, two, three, four times before we get to the next inversion of G augmented, which would be have a B on the top. You can hear how those are the same, right? Okay, same chord, just a different, the, the order of the notes has been jumbled. All right. Also, you could 
you could call it by each, you could call the root of that chord by each note that's in the chord. All right, so it could be a B augmented as well, and it could be a D sharp augmented. All right, then you would go to the next string setup and do the same thing. Okay, so here's a G augmented here on second, third, and fourth strings. So if I raise the interval up on the high string, it goes to an E minor. The next one's a C minor. Um, and the next one is a G sharp minor. Okay. Um, or A flat minor is what, what I called it before. All right. Now, that same parent chord, the augmented chord, if I lower the intervals, we get a major triad. Okay, so G augmented would go to B, uh, B natural major triad, okay? Then we have a G major triad just by lowering the second string by one interval, all right? And then the next one would be a D sharp major triad. So. So all of that is uh, teaching you several different things. Um, it actually can help you with voice leading as well. Um, if you were to, for instance, go from G major triad something like that, okay, you're already getting into some cool musical ideas. Um, the next thing it's showing you is how to get um, 12 triads out of a four fret area, okay, before it starts to repeat again. And you get 12, the same 12, just in a different order on the next four, okay? And the augmented triad, you're going to get one position, the inversion, the next inversion, okay, and then if you go up another major third, you're back home, okay, so these move up in major thirds. All right, now let's look at the next set of important information from uh, Pat Martino's um, uh, theory lesson here, okay? So this is a four note chord, it's a fully diminished chord. Diminished seven is uh, commonly known as. Um, so let's look at G here. All right, so you have a, uh, a flatted third and a flatted fifth with the G. Okay, so D goes down to D flat. Uh, and then you have B going down to B flat. So that's a diminished triad. Well, then we add E, which is the sixth of G, but... In the context of diminished chords, we call it the double flatted seventh, okay? So this is a diminished seventh, but it actually has a uh, double flatted seventh. All right? You've probably heard these move up in minor thirds because th th this is how, similarly to the augmented chord that uh, uh, inverts every major third, the diminished seventh chord or the diminished chord inverts every minor third. Okay, and um, that's used quite often in music. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Pat Martino's uh, instruction here was lower in any uh, of these notes and you'll get a dominant seven chord. Okay, so let's go from G fully diminished or diminished seventh and let's lower that first note. That gives you an F sharp seven. Okay, with the root on the top. Okay, and that's getting back to what I was saying earlier, viewing the roots of chords all over the place instead of just bass heavy information. All right, let's do the next uh, string. That gives us a C, C7. Okay, let's do the next string. That's an A7. Next one, that's an E, E flat seven, dominant seven. Okay, so then you're gonna go to the next fret over, uh, A flat diminished seven, okay? 
and you're going to have uh, four more dom dominant chords there. The next fret over would be A diminished seventh. You could have four more dominant chords that go with that. Okay, so we've got four plus floor, <laughs> floor, four plus four plus four equals 12. All right, then we're at the next inversion of G diminished seven. Okay, so now in a three fret area, you've got 12 different uh, chords. Um, and those things are going to repeat in a different order on the next three before you get to the next inversion of that diminished seventh, okay? So, augmented parent uh, begets minor and major triads, okay? You do it four times before you get to the inversion. So you get three triads of, of minor or three triads of major per uh, per parent, <laughs> all right? And then you do that four times, so that equals 12, then you're at the inversion of the of that first chord that you did. All right, so there you have it. Really kind of a cool lesson on um, a simple way of learning uh, inversions of chords, okay? And you can do that on different string sets, right? Remember that. So G augmented here, there's a G augmented here, G, G augmented here, and then here. All right. So that's four string sets. You can learn triads on all four of those string sets by starting with the augmented parent. All right. On the diminished, you would have three string sets because it's a four note chord. Okay. All right, so you would go through that same process in learning your dominant chords on those string sets using the diminished as your the diminished seventh as your parent. So it's kind of a complicated um, theory, but it's not in the sense that you're only moving one note at a time. So if you take the time to go through it and maybe even write it out, chart it out, I, I did that um, when I was learning this, and it really helped me to start to see and connect um, inversions to each other, uh, inversions of chords, and even between multiple string sets, right? So not just going, okay? So let's say I wanted to do uh, one, you know, one inversion, and then skip down to the next string set. So I did strings one through four, and then I have two through five, you know, being able to connect those dots and not be um, necessarily limited. And then um, <clears throat> doing the same thing with, um, with the, the chords that those um, yield, all right? So, okay, so that's all I got for you today. Um, I know this is a little bit strangely formal, but informal at the same time because I'm really just another one of those Nashville guys rolling out of bed and playing guitar, uh, thankfully, for a living. But uh, hope you have a great day. See you soon.